My name is Atul Madan. I represent a company called Comviva from India. And uh, today I'm going to talk about how do we see the digital services uh, in mobile area. So before I start, yeah. OK, so let's have a look at how does the market look like over the next five, 10 years? How do we see market shaping up? And if we see, uh, we expect the revenues to really boom $1.3 trillion cumulative revenue in digital media space over the next eight to nine years. Immersive media and mobile media to contribute around $163 billion. Interestingly, if you see, Today, if you see the data consumption per subscriber is around 30 GB in mobile environment, and it's expected to triple over the next nine years. So there's a significant growth that we see, and that growth is primarily coming from video streams. And if you see uh, the growth from 2016 to 22, video is growing exponentially over the next four, five years. And other interesting aspect which I see is, uh, if you see on the right hand side in the bottom, overall media entertainment revenue is going to be around $420 billion by 2028. And interestingly, 80% of that is going to come from mobile environment or mobile assisted environment. And that's where we see there's a significant opportunity which exists for all content partners to actually monetize and use this environment to be able to create interesting new innovative services. Now, if we see how overall digitalization is happening, what is happening across different industry verticals, if you see media and entertainment stays at the top with very, very high level of digitalization which is there. Telecom is catching up pretty fast. Now, if I, if I look at my telecom experience, every telecom operator is now fast forwarding on tele, uh, digitalization. Other side, uh, if you see in the bottom side, smartphones, the data consumption of smartphones is growing very, very rapidly. And from 5.8 petabytes of data consumption in 2016, it's going to be 42 petabytes of consumption, a 48% CAGR. If you look at the videos, uh, video overall across the devices, across different distribution channels, is expected to grow 54%. So what we see is mobile device and video consumption, both of them are growing very, very rapidly. Now, the other side of it, if we look at how mobile advertising is shaping up. And if you see that way, from $16 billion revenue in 2014, it has grown up to $61 billion by 2018. So there's a significant bit of advertising that is happening in the digital environment. And Google, Facebook are still leading the troops. And what we see is different types of social videos, which are big drivers for advertising growth. Next thing, now what are the content guys doing? If you see five years ago, you did not have Hulu's, Amazon's, and probably Netflix. Netflix has been there for a long, long time. Uh, but the way they are shaping up and the, the way they are growing very, very rapidly in the content space, it shows that there's a significant play available for OTT players today and going forward in bringing new and innovative services to consumers. Now, what are different approaches which different, uh, let's say telco, in telco world, what different telcos have taken? Some of them have taken the build approach where they produce the content themselves. Some have taken the buy approach where they buy the rights for the content. Some have decided to license, not really buy or produce it themselves. Fourth is bundle. So wherein you aggregate content from various partners and deliver services to your customers. Each of these aspects have different benefits and uh, challenges which exist. Of course, if you do decide to have a build and buy, it, you have much more control, faster time to market, but it's expensive. And we all know content mortality rate is very, very high. So you really need to take care of that aspect. Other approach which is there which some of the operators have taken is the license it or bundle. 
Of course, uh, it also has its own advantages and disadvantages. Advantages being uh, you have cheaper costs. And disadvantage primarily is how do you really differentiate? You may end up having only long tail content. So you really need to have a right mix, fine tune the offering to be able to deliver the right value to your customers. Now, if I look at the exciting space of OTT, there's a lot of innovation, a lot of creativity which is there. But if I look at this part of the world where plastic use is not that high, OTT players typically face a few challenges. One is, how do I collect money? Of course, we are all in business of making money. Second challenge which they face is, I have a very creative idea. How do I really go to market in different countries if I really have to scale up? How do I go to multiple countries in the shortest possible time? Third is, oh, I've decided I'll go to three different countries, but I don't understand consumers there. So if I don't understand consumers there, how do I price my product? How do I position my product? And all that stuff. Fourth, I, fourth aspect is, when I go to a new country, how do I manage my cost of acquisition? So these are typical challenges which OTT players face, though of course they do have a lot of creativity available with them. Now, to do that, uh, what we believe is uh, Telco World offers all these advantages. So the challenges which OTT has are all the strengths which Telco World has. So we clearly don't see OTT players and Telcos at loggerheads with each other. What we see is there is a clear synergy which exists between both the sides. And both of them can come together for a win-win situation. Some more uh, interesting data in terms of what kind of content is consumed by pe people in different age groups, different genders, different countries, different devices. How do people react to different types of content? And if you see, typically uh, 18 to 25 likes two to five minutes videos the most. If you look at what kind of videos people like uh, in terms of country, uh, people are actually watching a lot of that content at home, even though the device might be mobile, but the consumption is happening at home, not outside. If you look at uh, different countries in terms of what kind of content they like, what kind of people like short format content, what kind of people like micro content, what kind of people like long format content. So there's very interesting data which comes out, and that is what you really need to understand about consumers. <coughs> Sorry. So if we understand consumers in that kind of a depth, only then we'll be able to find what is the right service which can be launched in a particular geography. So there's a lot of research which is required. Now, if I look at different genders, what kind of content they like in terms of whether it's movies, TV shows, news, games, sports. So again, very interesting the data which comes out. And believe me not, this is not an easy job to do. You really need to put in a lot of research efforts in terms of finding out what sells where and at what price. Now, other interesting thing is we all talk about social media. How is social media impacting the consumption and discovery. If you look at, uh, people are discovering more and more content through social media. So how do we effectively use social media for discovering the content? Another interesting thing on the bottom left hand side is the moment I discover something, how is my buying pattern? If you see 11% of the people on social media, sorry, 11% of the people on social media buy instantly. And that is probably one of the highest percentage conversion rates available anywhere. 44% of the people buy in a short while. So there is a clear benefit of using social media effectively to be able to monetize the content that we have. In addition to that, of course, social media allows you to gather a lot of data. It allows you to have a lot of social feedback and also understand consumer sentiments. So as I said, it is driving discovery as well as purchases. So it's a medium where any service that we have, we must have a social media interface with any of those services. 
Now, as Comviva, where are we present? We are present in 135 countries. We work with 135 operators in 95 countries. We work with more than 200 content partners globally. Uh, then content is available in 35 different languages. And we are part of a large uh, conglomerate, which is Mahindra Group in India, which is $25, $21 billion. Uh, now, whatever I've spoken about, it will remain uh, half the statement unless we talk about some of the case studies that we had. Now, uh, what we did, this is an example of Middle East, wherein we are working with one of the operators there. And this case study is from there. The revenues were not really growing. And then operator wanted to figure out, uh, find out a partner who can help them grow their revenues. So here came in Comviva. And what we did, we understood what were the business challenges, what were the technology challenges, and how do we really get around those challenges and find the right solution and right partnerships for the operator. Now, we have the basics in place. After that, sorry. One second. I'm really sorry. I think there's one slide which is missing. I'll just talk about that slide. OK, so uh, when we went there in Middle East, so what we did was, uh, because Middle East has quite a heterogeneous population. People from different nationalities are there. So we try to understand what languages people speak, which countries are people are from, what kind of ARPUs they have, uh, what kind of services they are consuming. And then based on that, we did a service gap analysis. And based on that service gap analysis, we identified what kind of new services needed to be launched in that customer. And then based on that service gap analysis, we went to different countries and identified who were the right partners who could help us bridge that gap. And uh, we brought those partners on board. And based on that, we were able to significantly grow the business revenues for the customer there. Now, Another thing which is an example is what we did last year was we did FIFA World Cup live streaming with Uridu in Myanmar. Uridu in Myanmar, as you know, probably is the third largest operator in Myanmar. And uh, they were really struggling with keeping pace with the growth that was happening in the market, Uridu being the first uh, 4G operator there, but they still were struggling. So they wanted to do something special about FIFA World Cups. So what we did, we were able to launch their services within flat 14 days, uh, wherein we live streamed FIFA World Cup to more than 200,000 subscribers they had. And we streamed 48 years of content in those 30 days. And uh, effectively, uh, Uridu gained almost 3% subscriber base in those 30 days. Now. Uh, if we look at when we, we spoke about the kind of challenges which content partners uh, typically face, which is one is higher cost of acquisition, second is uh, go to market if you have to go to multiple markets, third is uh, consumer insights, and fourth and most important is monetization or collecting the money. Now, if I look at the telco side of it, in the telco side of it, telcos know the consumers. Telcos can collect the money. Now, tel telcos are struggling with growth of revenue. And fourth thing which is there is telcos don't really want to be worried about IPR management. Because a lot of content partners, they come in. Uh, telcos have to have the right regulatory environment or people in place to be able to manage the IPRs. So the strengths of telcos are the, some of the challenges which content partners are facing. So that's where Comviva comes in between. What we do is we work closely with the content partners on one side and the telco partners on the other side to be able to deliver value to both our partners and create a win-win situation for all the persons. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe I was a bit fast, but if you have any questions, I can answer those. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for a tour from Conviva. Thank you very much, my friends.